Hey, what is up guys? Michael with Tech Heads here, and today we're talking GoPro. That's right, the little cameras you sometimes see strapped to people's foreheads looking completely ridiculous, but also capturing some of the coolest video out there. With its portability, durability, the fact that it's waterproof, and a slew of accessories to make sure you can strap it, stick it, and mount it to just about anything you need to to get the shot that you want, GoPro really is the top player in the action cam game. Now back in October, GoPro released the two newest and most powerful additions to their lineup, the Hero 4 Black and the Hero 4 Silver. Now we got our hands on the Silver Edition, and today we're going to unbox it, show you exactly what you're paying for, talk about its specs and features, and also discuss why we think the Hero 4 Silver Edition might actually be the better buy compared to its slightly beefier twin brother, the Hero 4 Black. The GoPro Hero 4 cameras feature a brand new and enhanced sensor, making them the most powerful products GoPro has ever built. At $399, the Silver Edition can capture 1080p video at 60 frames per second and 720p video at 120 frames per second to help you get some of those really smooth slow-mo shots. It can also capture high-quality 12 megapixel stills at an impressive 30fps. GoPro has also enhanced the built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity to help you control your camera with your GoPro smartphone app or the smart remote, which they sell separately. The microphone and audio system have also been completely overhauled, giving you high-fidelity sound with nearly two times the dynamic range of the Hero 3 series. And in addition to the new auto low-light sensor, which eliminates the need for guesswork in capturing shots in lower lighting, there's also a night photo and night lapse mode which lets you customize your exposure settings for single shot and time lapse photos in ultra low light. And then there's ProTune, which is the label GoPro is giving their set of deeper customizable settings, which will allow you to manually configure your level of color, ISO limit, exposure, and more, making sure you can pull off any shot you want at any time. And these settings can be configured for both video and photos. And of course, this thing is waterproof up to 40 meters or 131 feet. But while all those features are great, the thing that really sets the Hero 4 Silver apart from the rest is the touchscreen LCD. Now this is the first time a GoPro camera has ever had a built-in screen and it's awesome. Making quickly framing your shots or making quick changes to your settings super simple and convenient. You can also now play back and watch the shots you just took instantly without the need for a computer or an app. Now while the Hero 4 Silver does shoot some video at higher frame rates and resolutions, once you get above that 1080p mark you do start running into some limitations. So if you think that for what you'll be doing, you'll start to hit a ceiling with the Hero 4 Silver's abilities, you may need to look at the Hero 4 Black, which will cost you an extra 100 bucks, but does have the ability to shoot 4K video at up to 30 FPS. Now there's no touchscreen on the Black Edition though, which does kind of suck. In terms of what you actually get in the box, of course we start with the camera. This thing is super tiny and light and weighs only 2.9 ounces without its housing. On the side here, you've got a little door that opens up to show you your ports and a slot for the micro SD card. And then on the back, of course, you got that really nice touchscreen and also a connector for any additional accessories, usually an extra battery. There's a settings button there on the other side. And then of course, the main power button is on the front. And then you've got the standard case that comes with the GoPro. Now, this is what's actually responsible for keeping it safe from all the elements like dirt and sand, and of course, waterproof up to that 131 feet. This clasp on top keeps it really tight and secure inside, and that back door is actually interchangeable. There's two more in the box that give you some additional options for different situations. Next, you've got these two adhesive mounts. The first one is completely flat, letting you stick your GoPro to any normal flatter surface, and the other one is more rounded, allowing you to mount your camera to a convex surface. They both got this 3M adhesive on the bottom, which is pretty durable. And then you got this little rubber lanyard thing that just connects your mounting pin to the different mounts and housing so you don't lose it as you're swapping them out. And then next up we have the battery. Now this is an 1160 milliamp battery and without Wi-Fi enabled, according to GoPro, this battery fully charged will give you one hour and 40 minutes of continuous recording at 1080p with 60 frames per second. Next, we've got the first of two of the additional back doors for that standard housing unit. This is the touch back door, and this one is also waterproof, but only up to 10 feet. So basically, this isn't good for being submerged. It's better for just, you know, with wet conditions, but it does allow you to continue to use that touch screen on the back. The second one is the skeleton back door. Now, this allows for better sound to enter through the camera, but is not waterproof at all. And GoPro doesn't recommend using this for anywhere where you might get dirt or sand or water near the camera. Next, you've got the standard USB cable. This is a mini USB used for charging and connecting to your computer. And then you got this three-way pivot arm, which you can use to on any of those quick adapters to help you get a better angle for your shots. 
And then last in the box, we've got this curved quick release buckle. Now this is almost identical to the one that's already on the standard housing, uh, but it does sit up a little higher and has a little bit of a curve to it, just to let you give another option to get a different shot if you need to. Okay guys, so there's everything that's inside the box and the basic specs and features of the GoPro Hero 4 Silver. Now to talk a little bit more about the actual settings of the camera and how you can fine tune them to get exactly the shot that you want, we're gonna to toss things over to TechHeads photography expert, Jason. Hey, what's up guys, Jason here with TechEd. So Michael went over a lot of the basic features with the new GoPro Hero 4 Silver Edition, but I know a lot of you are excited about the new user-friendly ProTune menu. So we're gonna dive into that a little bit. We're gonna talk about each setting and how you can use it to your advantage. So let's get started. First up is white balance. So white balance is basically the color temperature of your film, cool to warm. You got five settings with the GoPro. You got auto, which really does a good job in most situations. You got 3000 Kelvin, you got 5500 Kelvin, and you got 6500 Kelvin. And you also have native. Now, like I said, auto does a really great job, but if you want to lock down the settings at any time, you can take it to 3000 Kelvin, which is more of a, uh, a bluish cast. You got 55K, which is a bit warmer, used usually in daylight. And then you got 6500, which is a very warm yellowish tint. Native actually doesn't apply any white balance correction, so that's something you'll have to apply later in post. All right, next up is color. Now you got two options here. The first being GoPro color. Now this applies saturation and contrast and gets you more accurate color straight out of the camera. The other is flat. Now this doesn't apply any color tuning that the GoPro color does and really should only be used if you're experienced in contrast and color correction in post-production. All right, so next up is ISO limit. This is basically how sensitive your sensor is to light. Generally speaking, the higher the ISO, the brighter the image will be. Now, I did read that the default ISO is actually set to 6400. This is really what allows the camera to have such great low light performance. However, uh, this light boost is also what introduces digital noise and grain into the image. Now, setting that ISO limit lower will remove some of that digital noise, but it'll also darken the footage a little bit. Personally, I prefer a cleaner image, so I keep my ISO limit a little lower. Uh, also, keep in mind that if you're shooting in daylight, um, but the camera doesn't actually boost the ISO because it just isn't needed. Next up is sharpening. This is actually just digital sharpening. Uh, this is applied to make the image look a little bit sharper. By default, it's actually set to high, but I personally find this a little distracting because it makes everything look a little too sharp and not really realistic. Um, if you set it to low, it actually does look pretty smooth, but I do like some sharpening, so I leave mine at medium. All right, last up is exposure compensation. This is where you tell the camera to make the exposure either brighter or darker. Now, default, it's set to zero, obviously. Uh, but because it meters for the scene, you may not always get the type of shot that you're looking for. And really the best example I can think of is maybe if you're on a ski slope on a bright, sunny day, the camera's going to see all the white snow and the bright sky, and it's going to say, whoa, there's, a way, there's way too much white here, and it's going to try to underexpose everything to break it to that medium gray. Now, the problem here is, is that you want the snow to be white, so you would go into the camera settings in the ProTune and make the exposure compensation plus one or plus two to manually overexpose the image, and that'll bring the whites back to where they should be. All right, guys, there you have it. Those are some of the settings in the ProTune menu and what they mean. Hopefully, that'll help you get that cool action shot next time you're out. Okay guys, so there you have it. There's a quick rundown of everything you need to know about the GoPro Hero 4 Silver and what it can do. Now Jason and I are gonna be working together in a future video to take this thing out into the wild, get some of our own action shots, and put these settings to the test. We're also gonna be comparing footage we get from the GoPro to footage we get from the iPhone 6. And if you're somebody in the market for a new GoPro right now, and you're on the fence about whether you should get the Hero 4 Silver or the Hero 4 Black, there's really only one question you need to ask yourself, and that's, do I need 4K? If the answer isn't a resounding yes, then your money's much better spent getting the Hero 4 Silver. You're paying $100 less and essentially getting the exact same camera without the ability to shoot some of those higher frame rates and resolutions. But you are getting that touchscreen LCD panel on the back, which makes framing your shots quickly and controlling some of the settings of the camera a lot easier than having to always go to the app. So that's it for today, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to make sure you're one of the first to get notified when that next GoPro video comes out, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Throw us a few thumbs up. Share us with your friends. We'd really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video.